Hey everyone, Krista here, and here is another wonderful video for my series, Coffee with Coaches. And today I'm excited to have a very special guest, Dr. Natalia Vichovsky. Many of you probably have uh, seen Natalia because she is an amazing coach and a personal branding expert, and she is wonderful on social media, giving away a lot of a lot of free knowledge. So if you follow her on LinkedIn, um, where else can people follow you, Natalia? Uh, Instagram, Instagram, Facebook, and then yeah, almost <laughs> except for Twitter and Snapchat. <laughs> Ah, uh, you're like me then. I have something about Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Well, welcome to my show. I'm so happy to have you here. Um, Thank you so much for the invite. Thanks, Krista. Absolutely. So the, the reason I wanted to speak with you today is because there's a lot of confusion around coaches and coaching. And I really want my audience to understand um, your, your take on it. Uh, so I wanted to start off by asking you, how do you define coaching? <laughs> I think the easiest way to describe it is by comparing it to other, let's say, guiding techniques that are thrown into the same pot with it. So a lot of people mix up coaching with consulting and with mentoring. So let's start with the easiest thing that everybody understands. What is a consultant? For me, a consultant is somebody who is an expert, a guru, or somebody who knows a lot in a specific field. And when I have a problem, let's say, I don't know how to dress, so I consult or I invest in a color consultant, that person will, will check out my, I don't know, my personality type and my body type and say, based on everything that I've seen, based on the conversation that we had, I would recommend so-and-so. This is the plan. Good luck with the implementation. So this is a project. A project could be shorter, could be longer, but it's limited to a certain amount of time and it's rather shorter than longer. I pay for the knowledge, for the advice, and I know how to implement it. Then the second thing is mentoring. Mentoring is something that I see as long term, something that happens over a long amount of time. That person usually also is more experienced, but in a wider field. And the relationship is more of a teacher. So whenever the mentee needs advice in this area, on that area, or that area, these people meet, the mentor and the mentee. But it's not as condensed and so intense and very uh, very often mentoring is something that people get for free. For example, they are mentored by a more advanced person within a company or some people, they offer mentoring service as a way of giving back. But there are also mentorship programs that you pay for. So I think the difference is that it takes longer, that it's not specifically connected to one topic one problem it is a journey it can take over a huge amount of years and then we have the coaching so for me coaching always has to do something with empowerment and with inner blocks with wrong beliefs or false beliefs and with unleashing the biggest potential in a person and in contrast to a consultant or mentor the coach needs to be super smart and great in asking questions to guide the person who then has to find his or her own answers to the specific problem. So that's, for me, the big, big difference that as a coach, you're not allowed to say, you should do this. That's what you need to do. Because a lot of these things are based on values and individual targets, and individual interests. And these are decisions that a person needs to make on his or her own. The only thing that a coach can do is literally ask, guide, ask, be there, listen. And when somebody needs support um, in a sense of an empowerment, a yes, and I give you the permission, this is what a coach can, of course, also do. Wow. Now, that was a very powerful answer. I love it. Uh, you're, you're absolutely right that those three terms get used interchangeably by mistake. And some people will argue with you that they hired a mentor and they're calling that person a mentor, but this person is coaching them. 
So it's kind of, uh, it makes it even more confusing by how people call themselves. Um, and I also think that I wanted to ask if person can do a hybrid. So let's say someone hires you and they come to you with, um, example, personal branding issue. They know that they, they don't know much about personal branding. So you're giving your expertise. So in this way, you're consulting because you have an in-depth expertise that you possess specifically in a field of knowledge. And this person is paying you for the service to give them this knowledge. So you mm -hmm. are educating them, you are advising them. Uh, so it's more of a, a, di a direct consulting kind of position. However, let's say that they also have some internal complexes, uh, deep-rooted beliefs that they're not interesting enough. And that's what's holding them back from creating their personal brand. Or they're very camera shy. So they don't want, they don't, um, they, they can't implement this wonderful expertise you've given them. You've given them all the tools, but they're not doing it because they need mental coaching to unblock those beliefs about themselves and overcome them. Do you have, mm -hmm. do you have ever encountered this kind of scenario where you have to work on both levels? Yes. So this is also the reason why I call myself a coach Zaltan. I like that term because what I do is really both. For me, coaching and consulting are also sort of techniques. So I give my best to consult people, but I regularly also coach them to an extent where I can literally help them when it comes to camera shyness, when it comes to I'm not creative, when it comes to um, I, I'm not expressive enough. So everything when it comes to creativity and content creation that's where I definitely turn into the coaching role, role or, you know, when I turn into, when I put on my coach hat. Some clients, they have some deeper issues and even traumas that are rooted to childhood experiences or something dramatic that happened in their teenage years. And the thing that I then say is that from your wording, from your body language, I can see that there is something that goes deeper than that. I am not qualified to touch that and I could ruin more than I could heal. But I have a handful of people who are expert in this field. They do, they have different techniques. So I would highly recommend that you work with that person because you won't be able to fly. And I can't make a unicorn out of you, you know, going out there being amazing if you're running around with a backpack full of stones. But you know what? We've seen that there are stones right now. So if you truly want to make a difference, and that's the reason why we're working together, please get rid of the stones and you won't believe how powerful, what an amazing, powerful effect that will have on your brand and your content and everything. And 85% of the people that I work with are thankful for the fact that I point that out and say it in such a gentle way. And they also invest in, in a healer, a therapist, a psychologist, whatever, to then get that out of their system. I love that because you, uh, you just touched on another important point is that a coach can't be everything to everybody and you kind of don't know what you're getting into uh, until you work with a client. So they may come to you and they say, well, I'm coming to you as a personal branding expert. But once you work very quickly with them, you have the expertise and the intuitiveness to quickly look underneath the surface and understand that there's more than meets the eye. And I love that you're referring uh, to others. And that, that, that's important because uh, what you touched on is I'm not good enough. And there must be a reason, well, why aren't you good enough? And that's such a whole different ball, ball game there. Um, and, or I'm not, I don't have any, any creative ideas or my, my ideas aren't worthy enough to, mm. uh, that w others would care. I've heard yes. that before. It breaks my heart when people feel that way. Um, mm. So I agree with you. Um, so I'm interested in you. I'd like to know how you, I, I mean, I have personally heard your story, but I want to make sure my audience has and hear it in your own words again, how you came 
to this amazing career um, of becoming a coach. People don't go to school and say, I'm going to get a doctor's degree in coaching, do they? So how did you, yeah. <laughs> how was your journey uh, in your life? So I studied social science, which is the, the science of human behavior, human beings. I was always fascinated by human beings. And since I'm a child, I had a have, or I have a, I would call it hate love relationship with us, with this species, but I wanted to, to study it because I need to understand more. So I did that. And uh, after that, I didn't know what to do with it. So I started working then in the government field, in uh, the educational sector, and uh, did that for three and a half years, then realized, nah, education, maybe not so much me, government sector, uh, not so much. Uh, it's not so much about results and productivity. It's a little bit la laid back. So you know what? Okay, let's try private economy. And then I swapped into marketing. Did that for two and a half years and then realized, well, also don't like that because I have the feeling as if I'm using my knowledge in marketing against people to make them buy stuff that they don't want to impress yeah. people that they don't like with money that they don't have. So what on earth am I going to do? Um, yeah. And this is then when I realized that I was living um, a lie. I, I told myself continuously, I'll be happy in my next job. I'll be happy in my next job. Mm -hmm. So this happened twice. And I was like, eh, not sure what will happen in the next one. And there were a lot of factors Cut a long story short, I realized I need a break. I need to do my homework. I need to figure out who I truly am and what I want to do with my life. Because people perceive me as being successful, but I felt miserable. I like I was very, very low on energy. I was continuously sick. I stopped smiling. And then during a nine-month sabbatical, I literally touched every concept that I was taught and figured out what it means to me. So what does success mean to me? What does happiness mean to me? What's career? What makes me happy? How does my dream job look like? Now I created a list of all the things that I always wanted to do. I literally failed myself up to my dream job because, I mean, we all have perceptions of what is cool and how we want to work. And then you do it and you're like, ah, yeah, okay. That's what I thought it is. But hey, in reality, that's not what it is. Uh, so yeah, I mean, coaching in the end or coach Zalting found me because I was obsessed with the idea of figuring out what do successful people do differently and why do some people make tons of money and why are they out there and why do they get all of these amazing jobs and opportunities, and whatever. And I figured out that the answer is continuous self-work and personal branding. So that's what people need to do. So I started doing that and experimenting and applying it to myself, started talking about it on social media until one person approached me and said, can you teach me that? The next person approached me and said, can you teach me that? Can you explain me that? Can you write an article about that? Can you do a video about that? And I was like, oh, amazing. Apparently, that's my job. Boom. There you go. Well, it's such an amazing story you have. I think there's so many things I want to ask you. I think one of the things that's very interesting is how you were able to come to these realizations on your own. Was it completely on your own that during this nine-month sabbatical? or? Did you reach out and find a good coach or a good mentor who helped you uncover your weaknesses, your strengths, your preferences, your values? Um, how was that? Did you have support or was it completely internal? I did it completely internal on my own because I was so paranoid at that stage. I understood that, um, that we can adapt and apply the wrong beliefs of other people and I was so fragile and so miserable that I literally locked myself away from everybody and every like <laughs> literally almost everybody that I knew. And I said, you know what? Forget it. My new best friends and, and mentors um, are people like Robin Sharma, um, Eckhart Tolle, um, Tony Robbins, uh, woof, Tim Ferriss, Marie Forleo. And what I did is I literally studied all of their videos all of their books and I re-listened to it over and over and over again until I saw different things I understood different things until I had aha moments until I really reached the step in which I understood that maybe everything that I ever knew was wrong and that I need to relearn it which was like I felt like Alice in Wonderland falling down the rabbit hole 
it was like opening the box of Pandora. <laughs> so I was excited and scared as hell at the same time. But I believed in a better tomorrow and I that I deserve to be happy and content and that my story will somehow help other people one day. Like these were three core beliefs that I developed since then. And then I just pushed forward every day until, you know, it got easier and I cried less <laughs> and I finally attracted other people into my life. And this is then when coaches and mentors came into my life. And then we, we really had a look and then eliminated root core wrong beliefs that were horrible. And since then, things got really, really easier. That is so powerful. I think that not everyone has that core belief, sadly, that they are worthy. And that's where I, I think that different from you, um, you know, there's, there's people who really believe I deserve to be happy. Mm -hmm. And it sounds ridiculous because if I put that out there out loud, I don't think a single person would admit it. But when mm -hmm. they really think deep down, are my actions really reflecting that belief? Or is that belief broken? Half the people will have to admit that that belief is not there. It's the saddest thing. And that's yes. what I've made my mission in my mm -hmm. new business. Uh, is to focus on those people who are broken and that deep down don't believe they're worthy. And mm -hmm. we're going to fix that. And we're going to say, you deserve happiness. You you belong. You are worthy. Uh, yeah. Because what you did to yourself, that core belief was there. And that's mm -hmm. what I think was enabled you to take such a painful, incredible journey on your own, at least up until the point of um, where you knew you, you were ready for others to help you. But those yeah. core values that you identified in yourself are the key because you probably saved thousands of dollars. I see many people jumping from course to course, from guru to guru, and these people are searching for answers. So they're like, oh, I'll pay for this course, I'll pay for this. And they get bits and pieces of knowledge, but they can't implement it and absorb it because mm -hmm. their values are broken. Their yeah. core belief in themselves is broken. So mm. you already bypassed all of those people um, and took this incredible journey. Um, what about personal branding in general? So it's such an interesting topic that you discovered in yourself that this was really where you could unleash your superpower, right? Uh, to be mm -hmm. extremely creative. And um, so personal branding is something that's not taught in school. If you go to university, uh, regardless of what your profession is going to be, there is no specific course that's like, well, now let's work on your brand. Okay. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I know of it, it, people work in creative fields. They may work on portfolios. If you study a creative field like art or um, video, you will have to produce a demo reel or a, um, you know, a, a press kit or something of that sort. But beyond that, your actual personal brand. It's such an undiscovered gold mine of a field. Are Am I right? <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, the majority of us, we leave school or college or university and we have never ever, or in the majority of cases, deeply reflected on the question, what does success mean to me? What does make me truly happy from the inside out? And how does my dream career look like? What does career even mean to me? And it's a disaster. That is a recipe for disaster because we will always go for an external definition of it. And then once we reach that step where we thought we should be happy, we should be successful, we should have our dream job, we find ourselves miserable, unhappy, sick, and don't know why. And then question our sanity because we have everything that other people told us. But because it's not based on our own values or own definition, that's what makes us sick. And that's what makes our soul cry and tell us, hey, listen up there. Do something different. I want to express myself. I'm getting goosebumps because you basically just described me. So I, I had a similar journey than you, but I'm not as mentally strong as you. So I was not able to um, really pull myself out all on my own. Uh, I needed to go through all the failures of hiring the wrong coaches, 
taking the wrong courses, listening to the wrong people. Um, and it's not because these coaches or courses were bad. It's because my core belief system was external, not internal. So you mm -hmm. just touched on a major issue of a, a big problem that we face is how the whole education system is structured around external success. We're taught beliefs that come from society, that come from our family, our upbringing, even our teachers. There's a clear definition of what is a good job or a good profession and a lesser good profession. And this creates a horrible confusion internally because when you realize that this profession isn't as good as it looked and it's not right for you, you tend to try to quiet your heart and keep going because there's the rational part of you that said, no, 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 this is, this is where I'm supposed to be. My whole upbringing has taught me, my whole external value system and belief system has taught me that this is the way to succeed in your career. But that voice that's telling you I'm miserable, I'm unhappy is annoying and it creates guilt. So then you yeah. feel this internal conflict because externally you're doing everything you were supposed to do, but internally you're miserable. And that creates self-doubt that maybe mentally there's something wrong with me. Yeah. And so I went through this as well. And I went to a psychiatrist, a psychologist, even a, a Buddhist monk to try to understand what was wrong with me. And until I finally understood there was absolutely nothing wrong with me, that I was just not living in line with my internal belief system, yeah. it, it was quite a crazy journey, you know? Mm. And unfortunately, society is overcomplicating things and doing more harm than good in the sense of career. I find that we should be working backwards. We should be designing our ideal life. Like, what does it feel good to me? How do I imagine my work day? Uh, what are the things that energize me most? And then turning it back into a realistic plan of action, how to get there. Um, so most people do the opposite. And I think personal branding is, is one of those missing pieces. Uh, so how do you feel that personal branding ties into your bigger picture of your personality, your strengths, your weaknesses? <laughs> oh, big question. Uh, for me... I mean, the personal branding approach or, or strategy that I've developed is quite different from what you usually see out there because my approach believes in personal branding from the inside out as well as online, offline. So I, I really understood that if we want to make a better, if we want to create a better tomorrow, if we want to make the world a little bit better, then we need to start with changing the way we are. Mm -hmm. I've recently read somewhere that everybody wants change, but nobody wants to change. And I was like, ah, fantastic. That's not how it works. <laughs> if you want to go, you know, if you want to have muscles, you need to go to the gym. It's not that you pay somewhere and oh, you get muscles. And it's the same with, with change. If you don't like what you see on TV or read in a newspaper, if you think the educational system sucks or society sucks, amazing great so you learned that for yourself but now what do you do like are you going to blame it on and say that it's uh, that it's not what you want and and just accept it or do you have the courage to actually stand up and do something because i think that's what the world needs a lot right now especially right now and in order to do that you need to work on yourself. You need to understand who you are, what you stand for, what's important to you, how you're going to make a difference, what is the problem that you will specifically solve? Because I think the world is full of problems and full of opportunities. So you won't be able to fix all of them, but, but find this niche, find the small thing that annoys the hell out of you, because this will be very closely then connected to your passion or the reason why you're on this planet, and focus on giving your best every day to solve exactly this problem and through that you build a tribe a next generation of people who are similar like doing something similar who believe in the same thing this is how you start social change this is how you do how you create a movement and this is what i decided this is what i want to do i mean i realized i disagree with what i see going on i give my best to live by example 
to be nice and kind and compassionate, not take myself so seriously, okay. and, uh, you know, teach that to other people. And they will teach that to others. So we have a ripple effect. And through that, I truly believe I will have somehow an impact on society. And when I die one day, you know, people will remember me as somebody who gave her best every day to, to make people think, to make people laugh, to make a difference. So people will remember and I will die feeling amazing. Cool. I will not look back and regret and think, oh, I wish I had changed and I should have done and oh, I wish I had. No, no, no. I will die with peace of mind and being happy. And that's that's my end goal, my overall target. Oh my goodness. that That's so beautiful. <laughs> I seriously <laughs> could talk to you all day, but I think <laughs> that I want that thought to sink in to people who are listening. Um, you you express so much about leaving a legacy and personal brand is a lot about that. Like, how do you want people to feel when they think of you? What are the descriptive words that at your funeral? I mean, it sounds morbid, but I actually think I want people to celebrate my life at my funeral and be like, exactly. wow, she was funny. She was, you know, she was passionate. She was really trying to make a change and she helped so many people. Those are the kind of things that I imagine someone saying at my funeral. I don't imagine them saying, well, she complained a lot and she never actually fulfilled her dream, but she talked about it all the time, like a missed opportunity. And she was embittered and she never took risks and uh, she never found that courage. Um, So, you know, someone recently told me that the best place for ideas is the graveyard. And again, morbidity, but it's true because people die with their unfulfilled creativity in their soul, their yes. unfulfilled mission, their life mission in their soul that they mm. quite never got to because mm. of, and then they'll list off a million excuses why it didn't quite work out. Mm. Uh, so you got to have to decide how you're going to live, right, in your life. And I love I love how you express the, your your reasoning for pursuing your dreams and passions. Um, so everybody, thank if I want um, to thank Natalia and be respectful of her time too. Um, how can people get in touch with you? Just social media, your website. It's Think Natalia. Uh, okay. Your website. Think, and and if anyone is watching the video, it's behind her. Literally, she has this beautiful um, wall. Think Natalia. Talk about personal branding. Uh, that is just so unique and amazing. So, <laughs> so if anyone wants to reach uh, Natalia, I highly recommend uh, you. Everybody needs a personal brand. And I could go on and on all day talking about how much personal branding will help you. So if anyone is unsure why they need a personal brand, please just start following Natalia. And uh, she talks about it all the time on, on social media. And you will see that it can it can touch on all the things you've tried in your career. Um, it will just take you to the right the right tribe. Um, it will attract the right people to you, and ultimately, it will make you memorable so that people can really remember what you want them to think about you versus having mixed messages or not having any message. Uh, So thank you so much, Natalia. This has been awesome. (laughs) You're most welcome. I really enjoyed our time and conversation. And and I just have to add, um, I lived in Germany for many years, and Natalia speaks German, so I want to say vielen Dank. (laughs) Sehr, sehr gern. (laughs) And she also has a German-speaking podcast, may I add. Um, Yes. How do we find that? What is the name of your podcast? Um, The Think Natalia podcast. Very easy. Okay, okay. So if any, anyone is German speaking or knows German speakers, uh, it's definitely worth it. And I'm so happy you did that for the German speakers. They, they need some, someone like you um, in their language. Thanks so I much. Think so. <laughs> <laughs>